Hey everybody, welcome to the Pace Studios here in New York City. Uh, we are here today with a very special guest, Matthew Electrician, who's here to perform for us along with Sila and Stephanie. Guys, thank you so much for, uh, for coming in and, and playing for us today. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. Um, so you guys have a, a new record out, uh, came out in, uh, last month, I think, called yeah. The Doubles. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to hear three songs from that record today. So tell us a little bit about the first one you're going to do for us. Um, well, the first song we're going to do is called Mountains, and uh, I, The Doubles is a double CD that has uh, a CD uh, that I recorded with a whole bunch of different backup bands as 45s, and then I re-recorded all those songs with this trio. And so this one actually was recorded with Stephanie uh, under her, um, her band name in Austin, uh, is Little Brave, and so uh, we did this one with her originally. And uh, yeah, it's called Mountains, and uh, you can figure out what you want it to be about, <laughs> I suppose. Take it away. There we go. Over mountains, 
Thank you, guys. That sounds beautiful. Thank you. Um, so you were talking about the the record, the doubles, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how this came together because it's yeah. sort of a unique story. Uh, basically, um, you had a, like a seven inch series of singles over the last couple of years with a variety of different collaborators, yeah. and then collected them all uh, and put them on this record, but also recorded new versions of each song. So. Yeah. Tell us why. How did that all happen? <laughs> why? What kind of uh, yes. Um, well, I, a couple of years ago, I had I had two songs, um, and I was I was kind of ready to make a new record, but I only had two songs. And oftentimes, that'll happen, and then I go and hide away somewhere and write, you know, the rest of the songs for a record. Um, but over the years, and I've I've been you know I've been doing this for a long time, and I've got a bunch of records out and. This, it, it had happened uh, a number of times where the first couple songs you write for a record, um, maybe it's six months until you finish writing the rest of the songs. And so by the time you make the record and then the record comes out and then you go on the road, those first two songs, they're the old songs by then. You've already sung them a bunch you know, at, at gigs. And, and I didn't want to have that happen with these two songs. I really liked them a lot. And I thought, I'm just going to put these out. Um, and instead of just putting them out digitally, you know, wasn't enough to put on a CD. Um, but I, I grew up with 45s. That was the first way I bought music. And so when I started playing uh, music professionally in the 90s, um, vinyl was gone, really. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm never going to be able to put stuff out on vinyl. And uh, so now that it was back, I thought, this is great. I'm going to put out 45s. And in the process of, of doing that, I, uh, I teamed up with a bluegrass band in Austin called Wooden Wire, uh, that are buddies and, and one of my favorite bands, and decided to use them as the backup band for, for the first two songs I did. And in the process of doing that, kind of decided that I was going to do six of these because I had all these great band friends in Austin um, that I would love to record with. And I thought, oh, this will be a neat project I'll do. And it was a neat project. It was, it was really fun. And we had a different band for each uh, each of the six of these records we did, and we had a different visual artist do the covers. Um, but it took a long time, and it cost a lot of money. It was just this. It, it ended up being this really long project, and and in the end, I wanted to put them all together, mm -hmm. and so I put them on a CD. And in the process of this whole two years, the band changed too, and it involved uh, Stephanie kind of joined up, and she had been one of the the guest artists on the vinyl project. Um, and then Sila has been with me for 18 years. And so the three of us started touring together and the songs were a little bit different and they weren't crazy, a lot different, but they were a little different. And I think I've always been a fan of, um, you know, you get the records and then you go see somebody live and they do it maybe solo. Yeah. It's different. And I like that. And, um, I think actually what, what reminded me of that was there was a Paul Simon, record that's one of my favorites, Hearts and Bones, that was kind of glossed over. It came out before Graceland, but after Still Crazy After All These Years. And some of the production on it is a little cuckoo over the top, but I, I love it. I've just loved it for a long time. But if you go back and you buy that record, I think I had it on cassette tape, but if you buy it on um, uh, iTunes or something like that, um, you get all these extras. And so you get all these like demo versions of these songs. And I just thought that was the coolest thing as a listener and as a music fan that, that you could have these different stripped down acoustic versions of all the songs. Um, so as a fan, I wanted to put out my own stuff kind of with stripped down versions of the produced stuff. I see. So it's sort of like one disc is the seven inch project. One disc is the, the re-recordings of, of all the songs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, segueing nicely. Uh, I think you actually one of the songs on the record is a Paul Simon song. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that's the one you're going to do next. It is. I, I it's, probably should have asked before I got okay. into this. That's okay. That's okay. We're not. We're going to save that for last. But um, but uh, but yeah, that is one of the songs that we did on there was a Paul Simon song. Um, sure. So tell us about the this this next one you're going to do from from the doubles. Uh, well, this next one is is called California, and um, although I've lived in Austin, Texas for 21 years, um, I was born in California and, and grew up in Northern California, Southern Oregon. And um, and uh, I've always had this uh, th this sense because I moved around a lot when I was a kid um, that I've never really felt like I had a hometown or or I feel like I have like 12 or 14 hometowns and I know that a lot of people can can kind of uh, uh, you know empathize with that or, or you know also have have dealt with that and I know when I was a kid there were a lot of military 
kids that, that kind of became my friends because they were the other people. My parents were not military. They were hippies, and they just moved because they wanted to move. Similar. Yeah, yeah, Vibe. similar or opposite, yeah, one, of, right. one of the other. And, um, and uh, but I, uh, I never had a sense of kind of territorial identity, I suppose. So I never felt like whatever... Um, do, you know, do you know when you travel around, if, if you travel around, um, you'll go somewhere, say a small town, a big city, whatever, and you ask somebody about the weather, because people do that, and, um, and they'll say, oh, you know, here in blah, 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 we always say, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Well, when you travel around, everybody says that. That's everywhere. That's the weather. That's what weather does. Um, but people have a sense of like, of kind of self-identity with their place that is like really intense and kind of ingrained. In New York, we say, when we're always asked to compare to Los Angeles, uh -huh. we always say that we like seasons here. <laughs> we, like, we like having a fall and a winter uh, and that that's what differentiates us and right. you know, makes us superior to... <laughs> That's the, bottom, that's the bottom line for all of those conversations. Well, and there's the other part, is the superior part, um, which I just think is great, um, that everybody has this sense that their place is the best. And, and that's, that's kind of great, but it's also, you know, it can be troublesome um, at times. But as somebody who grew up in all these different places, I don't have that sense. I kind of like, I like all these different places for different reasons. Um, and so I wrote this song really... Uh, for California because I, I love California and I spent a lot of my childhood there and it's also a beautiful place that that people want to go to you know people go there to vacation they go whether they're going to LA or they're going to the Redwoods all the way up north um, or they go skiing in Tahoe or people people go there um, a lot and I realized that I had heard all these songs about there's so many songs about California maybe it's just an easy word to put in a song too um, and I know a lot of friends in Austin who've written songs about California who had never been to California like they wrote these kind of fa fantasy songs about you know and if you go all the way back to you know Woody Guthrie has uh, what, what's his song Do Re Mi it's about yeah. about you know the Dust Bowl heading, heading west yeah, yeah heading right. west and um, it was this land of promise and it's been that for a long time you go back you know the gold rush and and the, after the Dust Bowl and um, but nowadays, if you move from California to somewhere else, people aren't as uh, welcome. They don't, they don't really like you, is what I've noticed. <laughs> that's, that's been my experience uh, in Austin. Uh, people are very upset that people from California are moving there. And I'm sure that's... You guys get that a lot, too. Yeah, this, and uh, I'll, I'll take the fifth on our yeah. reaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess this song is, is in defense of my homeland uh, to a certain extent, but also just in defense of... Uh, of all homelands, I suppose. I do not know where you are from And I don't know that it's relevant To our discussion here and now Regarding what you really meant When you singled out a state Within whose borders could contain the blame For the problems that you clearly felt But you could never name California I am made up of many men And women too from far and wide The centuries expanded Decades decide Whosoever shall be travelers and Forge into the wilderness And who shall stay behind To cultivate the tenderness California So many songs for you Oh, but I long for I do not know the way to go But I've wandered on willingly And wondered at the ways and means If only fleetingly Before now 
rather leave in town Before I have felt truly known And looking back a larceny The sand into stone California So many songs for you Oh, but I long for you California I have every sun inside me From the setting skies above me I do not know you by your name But I appreciate your eloquence And I recognize your heritage And I understand your arrogance A tradition is a tribe And a border is a line And you are a state And a state is in your mind California So many songs for you Oh, but I long for you Thank you, guys. The harmonies are really just gorgeous. Um and are very reminiscent of a kind of a folk music, I think, from times of yore. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the great folk harmonies of, uh, you know, CSN and, and Simon and Garfunkel as well. Yeah. Uh, and um, I know, you know, I'm excited to hear uh, your version of uh, the Paul Simon song that appears on the doubles. Mm -hmm. Remind me what the song is. Uh, it's called American Tune. American Tune, right. Yeah. Um, and tell me why, you know, of all of, the, of, all of those songs, you, 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 <laughs> you, went back to, you went back to that one. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, I grew up listening to all sorts of music, but Paul Simon was, was definitely kind of my songwriting hero. And I think uh, when, when, my, when I decided to play the guitar when I was 15. Um, I was a trumpet player since the age of five, and and uh, one day I kind of realized that um, it was hard to get uh, it was hard to get girls to go out with you in high school as a trumpet player, much easier as a guitar player. Um, I saw this this guy, uh, his name was Bill Henderson, he's still a friend of mine. He was sitting on this, the, this grass bluff where everybody ate lunch in high school, and he was surrounded by women, and he had an ovation guitar, and he was playing Sounds of Silence and Stairway to Heaven, and he had long flowing hair and a jean jacket with like a quote from Watership Down on the back. He was so cool, and all, he was just surrounded by girls, and I remember I was walking by and I had my trumpet case, and I looked at my trumpet case, and I looked at Bill, I looked at my trumpet case, and I went home that day and I asked my dad to teach me how to play guitar. And he taught me three chords, and then he gave me a Paul Simon songbook. And so everything I learned, I, I learned out of that book. Um, but American Tune has always, always been one of my favorites. And, um, and my, my wife, uh, that's the favorite, her favorite quote from any song, is uh, favorite line is out of that song. Um, but I also happen to be here in New York. I was here in New York on Election Day. Uh, I was in the middle of a tour with Lucy Wainwright Roach. She and I were doing a Cobell tour. And, um, and it, was, uh, it was intense times, I suppose, mm. um, depending on your political leanings. And uh, maybe it was intense. Intense the, either way. All I the think. way around, really. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was either really excited or... or uh, really not. In a, in a death spiral. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, Lucy and I had to kind of like pump each other up to go out and play shows. Because uh, we, we played in New York the day before Election Day, and then we had Election Day off. And then the next day we had a gig in Jersey and then Philly and kept going. And uh, um, so I, I, I had started learning this song or, you know, figuring it out and memorizing it um, on Election Day and just figured it was a good, uh, good song to have uh, and to be able to sing. Um, and I also kind of like it because it's, I suppose I, I suppose I know what the song's about, but, but also maybe I don't. Like I don't, it's not... Uh, overly, overtly specific, um, 
but it just feels like a good timeless song for anybody kind of standing up for what they think America believes. Mm-hmm. Um, we we played it the other day, and that occurred. That was kind of the first time that occurred to me, as I thought you could be on the other side of the political spectrum from me and listen to this song and mm-hmm. still feel like it was a like it stood up for what you believe in as well. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Take it away. Should we, we play it now? Please. Okay. <laughs> Let me make sure I'm in tune. Because we are, after all, streaming live. Yeah. Sorry about this. That's all right. Uh, we're very relaxed and casual here. It's fantastic. Know. We're very excited. We got to, right now, well, these guys are, but uh, I took my jacket off, but um, we got to wear our jackets today, which is very, very exciting, I'm I have to say. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, it's rare in the city these days. We're very, very happy. Um, it's about 100 degrees where we're from, and uh, the guitar knows that. Get 
some rest That's all I'm trying To get some rest Thank you guys that was beautiful thank you um so uh the new record is called the doubles yeah uh came out in june uh you're touring behind it you have a show coming up tomorrow night here in new york city at the rockwood music hall that's correct yeah um and uh some dates coming down the road that i'm sure are available for our, our viewers and our readers on online absolutely yeah. um so uh you know thank you so much matt the electrician and Sila and Stephanie Thank uh, you very for, much. for joining us here at Pace today and, and playing some beautiful tunes for us and Thanks so much. best of luck out on the road. I appreciate it. Thanks. Come back anytime. Thank you.